Hi, so in this quick tutorial, let me show you briefly how to calculate the natural frequencies of a model in OnScale. So we have this model, which is issued from one of the tutorial uh, on the website. So if you want, you have the step-by-step -step tutorial already on the website with some video explaining how to build it. So just to tell you what this model is, if you didn't follow the, the previous tutorial, so this is uh, this is a PZT material uh, disk. Uh, so it looks like a rectangle, but it is a disk bec because actually this model is a 2D axisymmetric model. Uh, so you can imagine this is a 2D model, but here you have a Y axis and this is rotated around the Y axis. So uh, yeah, so this is a piezoelectric material disk uh, and this is water around it. And you have basically two electrodes on both sides of this uh, disk. One on the top uh, with a certain voltage function which is applied to it and another at the bottom which represents the ground. So you have a voltage function which is applied in between this disk and if you look at what these functions look like um, by editing the function here it is a function which has a Ricker wavelet type of distribution in time. So it's something like that. So you basically apply an excitation uh, in terms of uh, voltage to this piezo piezoelectric material. And because this is piezoelectric material, uh, when you apply a voltage, it will actually deform and create some mechanical pressure from the voltage. So what we want to study here is when I apply this voltage around this disk, this disk vibrates and basically create acoustic waves in the water all around the disk. Um, and we want to study what is uh, the response inside the water, how this acoustic pressure looks like, and we would like also to, uh, to calculate the model frequencies of this uh, model. So uh, the first thing to do uh, in addition to this tutorial is to add another type of output because for the moment I have one output like that I have what one time history acoustic pressure probe at this position so basically I will get a time history curve uh, telling me exactly what is distribution of the time history acoustic pressure uh, at this exact position along time uh, the second type of output I have is uh, field data displacement and I can give it for example uh, in y-axis so it will it will tell me in y-axis what are the maximum displacement uh, on the whole model. Now I want to to have also the mode shape of this um, and I know that the, the the major like vibration frequency of this is around one um, is around 1 megahertz because I'm basically applying a function which has a drive frequency of 1 megahertz so I'm exciting this model at 1 megahertz so I want to get the mode shape at this frequency so I just add another output and if you look at the types of output you have shape data so this is what will give you uh, the model shape and it asks you for the frequency so you just enter 1 megahertz like that in the scientific notation of the acoustic pressure and that's basically all the need all the change you need to do to uh, the tutorial uh, example um, and now you can calculate that so let's just go to run on the cloud uh, and estimate that so, well, this model is fairly simple, so it takes 15 seconds to calculate. Um, well, let's use 8 CPU, so it's even faster. Uh, you see at the same time, it uses very few co hours. So you can, with your 10 co hours free per month, you can, you can run this kind, you know, hundreds of uh, such models just for free. So don't, don't be afraid to spend a few core hours to run simple models like this one. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just running that on the cloud um, and let's wait that uh, it finish to, to uh, solve my model.
Okay, so now it's finished. So I have to go to storage and let's let's refresh and make sure that I am selecting the the job I just run. Um, yeah, to make sure that I'm I'm downloading the latest data. You can you can smile, but sometimes you just download a second time the old data that you already calculated before, and then you uh, you don't realize why in why it didn't change basically. So just make be careful about that. Okay, so now that I have the data, let's switch to the post processor. Let's go into okay the file explorer here and basically my let's let's make sure that I'm opening the right folder. So yeah, so this is my time right now. So this is the one I just calculated. And my data here. So I have three types of results which are calculated by default. The one called FLX hist is basically my history curves. Uh, so you know, I double click here and it appears here into the post process so I can have a look at my acoustic pressure. So that's the result I obtain at the monitoring point where I put the probe that I, I was showing you uh, here. So you see here this is this point and this is the actual uh, calculated acoustic uh, pressure result at this point. So it looks like that. Um, and now what what you know you'd like to have is what if I want the frequency response because this is a time response right uh, Onscape calculates everything uh, according to time because it, it has a time solver so it it's more realistic because you get uh, things which are actually very close to the kind of data you would get if if you put real sensors on your model so it, it's like basically obs observing and oscilloscope and, and just getting the result. But now, you know, you always think about these kind of things in terms of frequency as well. So now I want to know what is this vibration frequency related to, to this kind of output of acoustic pressure. And the way to actually obtain that is very simple. You just click on acoustic pressure one time here and, and then you see that you have here FFT record uh, become activated. So FFT is a um, special mathematical function called the fast Fourier transformation, which basically uh, transform data from the time domain into frequency domain. So you just have to click here once and, and those results appear here. So the, the, this FFT function is applied directly to your data here and processed and it, it gives you back the result in frequency domain. So you have to to uh, to reset the viewpoint, or maybe I can just open another like that. Yeah, why not? And let's double click on this. So you have two. This is the MA. So this is the amplitude, and this is the phase. So if I click on her, on this, I'm getting the actual response in the frequency domain corresponding to this uh, time response. So you see that my model is actually excited exactly at. Well, not exactly, exactly, but it's it's around um, it's around one megahertz. And here you have, if you you make a zoom here, you have three uh, natural frequency response. Well, they are very close, um, and basically you have uh, you have the frequency response of this. So you you are able to get. Um, the, the natural vibration frequency of your model. So even if you have a more complex model, you can always do that. You, you just set a probe at maybe the maximum acoustic pressure area, and then you, you get this time uh, time response, you use FFT, and then you get, uh, you get this. Now I want to see the mode shapes too. So let's, uh, okay, let's reset the viewport. Yeah, so I have nothing here and now let's open the the shape FLX data file. So that's where my shape results are actually stored. And you remember that I I actually calculated the, the this model in the output. So that's the output I just added to this model. And this is the vibration shape at uh, at this frequency. So the the deformation itself uh, doesn't really matter here. 
Uh, this is just for reference to show you what is the kind of deformation. Uh, in model analysis, uh, the you know the kind of deformation amplitude is is not so important. It's just to show you the shape. If you want to amplitude, you have it on, on the on the frequency response graph. I just showed to you below. That's the real result. Um, okay, so that's that's the shape data, uh, the vibration of, of your model. Um, now there, let's let's just talk about something uh, more, uh, which is also important. Is um, how how am I able to get all the natural mod shape of this model? Um, that's probably a question that a lot of you have, and for that, we need to look at the input data. So um, I think. Uh, let's have a, let's make a zoom at this. So if you if you remember my input load, uh, my excitation is a recur wavelet with I think four sub wavelets. So it looks like that. Uh, yeah, well, let's make it a bit better to view. So it it's look like that basically. This is the kind of time ex excitation that I'm getting. Uh, so this is time excitation, but I want to know. How does it look in the frequency domain? And I can basically use the same method that I used before. So you just configure the viewports like that. Um, and you do an FFT record on it. And you get basically, yeah, you get this. This is the amplitude. So this is the frequency uh, type of input which corresponds to this time Recur wavelet type of input. So what you are basically doing is that you are exciting mo your model in in a w in a way like this, uh, with a frequency excitation which has a peak at one megahertz and which has a certain um, certain band. So frequency band. Um, so you can say this is a broadband type of excitation. Um, but if you are searching two kind of natural modes which are very far from from uh, these kind of modes which are for example in this area here you will not find them with this kind of excitation you you may have to to switch to another type of frequency um, of this in order to 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 get broader band or to displace this to to excite other types of mode so remember that uh, your excitation is always localized in a certain uh, frequency band. So this is because um, time and frequency are always linked together. Okay, so I think um, I think uh, it's almost all for this video. Um, in case I didn't explain something you're interested to know, uh, just leave a comment either uh, in the comment of the video or uh, wherever you're looking at this video. Just leave a comment, let me know, uh, and I will make another video to explain to you how to, uh, how to do what you want to do. Okay, thank you very much for watching.